Hey everyone, Crow here, and you may have seen that I've covered every single Solid State EM and remake table for Zacharia Pinball in the past. Well, that still leaves the retro and award tables, and while I'm not really sure how I'll handle the award tables, I've decided to cover all 27 retro tables in a single video, since I don't really think it's necessary to make a video for each and every retro table, because they are all very basic in concept and scoring. Now, retro tables are demakes from the original Solid State and EM tables, taking the designs from the 70s and 80s and turning them into machines as if they were designed in the 40s and 50s. Now, these tables can be brutal in that the aiming of shots can be difficult and sometimes impossible, and draining the ball can happen quite frequently. Nudging is very helpful in these types of tables, so if you need some nudging practice, several of these tables can be good to practice on. Now, depending on your platform, how you may obtain these tables may vary, but typically you'll get them in certain bundles, or if you buy the Solid State or EM counterpart, or by purchasing the 27 Retro Table Bundle. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to cover all the Retro Tables at once here. I mean, there's not much to talk about, and you're more than likely going to get them all with a single purchase anyway. I'm not really going to go deep into scoring at all on these tables because I found that some of the tables don't calculate scores based on what's indicated by the rules. And I'm just going to chalk that up to some of these tables needing more work on it since the game technically is an early access, at least on Steam. But this will just be a quick synopsis of each table based on what I've experienced over the last couple weeks as I've played them. Now for reference, I played all these tables in simulation 5 ball mode, so let's get started. Time Machine as the first retro table, this is as basic as it gets. Sure, the outlanes are just to the outside of the flippers, but it's not as bad as it looks, at least compared to some of the other retro tables. This one is simple and honestly not a bad starting point for retro tables. If you're playing a version of Zachariah Pinball that includes the Solid State Time Machine for free, then you should also have this retro version for free as well. That's the way it worked on Steam, and I'm assuming that's the same way it works on consoles. Locomotion. The ball may not last long on this table due to the two drain lanes outside of both flippers, but at least the flippers are a decent distance apart, and there's a peg in the middle of the flippers. In fact, I think a normal sized ball can't drain between the flippers because of the peg, but the lanes on either side of the flippers will more than make up for that. Devil Riders This is an interesting table in that it appears at first that the only way to drain the ball is between the flippers, but then you realize you also lose the ball if it hits any of the seven holes in the middle of the table. It's inevitable that every ball will be lost due to these holes, so you can only hope that the ball moves fast enough to skip by the holes for as long as possible, and when it does hit one, it's one of the higher value holes. Pinball Champ This is a fun table in that the ball will stay in play for a while while rocketing from pop bumper to pop bumper. It's quite amusing to watch when it really gets going. It may seem off-putting that the flippers are really far apart, but the fact that one of the pop bumpers is in between them means that the ball will usually get sent to one flipper or the other. But there are times where the ball will head straight towards one of the drain lanes instead. Shooting the Rapids This table can be difficult due to the two drain lanes in between the flippers, but honestly, I had a good time playing this one because of the goal to light the one, two, three, and four lights on the table. There are three spots in the table that can light each number, and they aren't necessarily easy to hit, but lighting all four will score a huge 10,000 points. And what makes things more difficult is having to do it all on one ball. Farfalla. The layout of this table is pretty similar to other tables I've already gone over here in that we have lane drains just to the outside of the flippers and a lane in between. The interesting thing here is that hitting the pop bumpers will cycle through scores of 10, 100, and 1000. Whatever score is lit when the ball passes through any of the rollover lanes is the amount of points that are to be awarded. However, there's not really any use in trying for the 1000 points and hitting the lanes without hitting the pop bumpers because that's pretty much impossible. Hot Wheels Oh boy, where to start on this one? How about the fact that the flippers are reversed? That'll certainly throw you off your game. Then there's the single pop bumper in the middle of the table that seems like it's meant to trap the ball in there for a while, but it never worked out that way for me. 
And then there's the loop that has a bunch of 100 point rollover targets that will score a full 700 points when the full loop is completed. And then you have to remember not to flip when the ball is exiting or the ball will go under the flipper and drain. This is one of my least favorites. Space Shuttle. The dangerous thing to look out for on this table is the extremely wide flipper gap. Fortunately, most of the time, the ball like to move horizontally through the table and give you an opportunity to hit it. But taking pot shots will inevitably have the ball take a bad rebound and drain right down the middle. Circus. Okay, this one really messes with my mind. There are two sets of flippers side by side at the bottom of the play field, and the flippers are controlled from left to right as left button, right button, left button, right button. What always screws me up about this is I keep hitting the wrong button for the flippers near the center of the play field. I do like the concept of the play field being full of pop bumpers and the rollover in the middle of the play field increasing the point value of the pop bumpers. But because of the flipper layout, I wind up solely concentrating on hitting the right buttons than I do about hitting the center rollover. Combat. The flippers are pretty far apart on this one, but at least you've got a post in between to help you out and it certainly helps out a lot. Other than that, you've got four standing targets worth 10 points each, but once all are lit, they are then worth 100 points each. And then there's the hole in the middle of the play field, which increases the value every time you hit it, but it's rather difficult to hit. House of Diamonds. Another table with a double set of flippers, but unlike Circus, the two left flippers are left flippers, and the two right flippers are right flippers. One of the biggest hazards in this table are the holes in between all the flippers, but the posts that are on each side of the flipper should help out, especially when you know how to nudge on this table. The main object here is to hit the jack, queen, and king rollovers in one ball, but be careful of the queen rollover because you'll need to nudge or lose the ball. Once jack, queen, and king are lit, the game will eject a new ball into the shooter lane, making this the only retro table with the ability for multi-ball. Earth, Wind, Fire. This one isn't bad at all and it's pretty straightforward. There are five holes in the table, all numbered from one to five, going down the center of the table. At all times, one of the five holes will be lit. The lit hole changes as the ball hits the pop bumpers. If the ball lands in an unlit hole, you get 50 points. But if it lands in a lit hole, you'll get 500 points. There's a lot of chance involved with this one, but there are no out lanes or odd drain holes, so the only way to drain is in between the flippers. Robot. I find the layout of this one a bit goofy. You've got two sets of flippers here, one that is in a normal position near the bottom of the play field, and then there are two drain areas just to the outside of the flippers, and then another set of flippers a bit above and further apart. What winds up happening is if the ball makes it down to the lower flippers, it can be difficult to get the ball back past the upper flippers because the shot area from the lower area is significantly reduced. It can be rather tricky to work around. The other thing worth mentioning on this table is that there are five holes that form a circle and one is always lit, worth 500 points, much like Earth, Wind, Fire. Black Belt. Another table with an unusual flipper layout. The two outer flippers are angled normally, but the two inner flippers are angled much steeper than usual, as if to slap the ball away from the drain. I actually think this is pretty cool, especially given the theme. The only downside is that sometimes it can be confusing to know which buttons control which flippers, because this time, the right button controls both flippers on the right side of the table, and the left flipper controls both flippers on the left side of the table. Ultimately, this is a table where you really don't have to aim for targets as you just try to keep the ball from draining. Soccer Kings. This table is up there as one of my least favorites. Two flippers. One is near the bottom in the center of the table, and the other one is mid play field off to the right. This is a table that really relies on rebounds for the ball to hit a majority of the targets and holes. Perhaps the most unusual thing about this table is the mini play area in the left lower corner. Once the ball enters this area, the ball is all gone. The score earned while draining can vary based on what lane it ultimately exits on. Star God. I actually like this one quite a bit since it's a bit different. The flipper layout is unusual but completely workable. 
The thing I like about it is that there are eight slingshots on the table and hitting each one of them will light a number up. If you can light them all up with one ball, you get 1,000 points. It's an unusual way to score points, but it's fun. There are five holes in the center of the table as well, and I believe that hitting all of them in one ball will award a good number of points as well, but I don't believe I was able to do that. Magic Castle. Here's a table that'll really put your nudging skills to the test. Aside from the two flippers and the four pegs, there's nothing to prevent the ball from draining. So here the focus is identifying when the ball is going to drain and nudge if it looks like it will. If you fail, at least you're going to get 500 points. That is unless the ball goes in between the flippers and then you get nothing. Clown. Oh, this one. All right, so this table has its two flippers about one quarter of the way up the table and almost as far apart as possible. Below the flippers are three pop bumpers and a bit of an area for the ball to bounce around. The problem is, is that this layout makes it one of the tables that you feel like you have the least amount of control in because once the ball enters this area, it's pretty much up to luck whether it'll bounce back upwards or drain. Sure, you can try to strategically nudge and try to prevent the ball from draining, but it's really up to the pop bumpers to decide if it's going to save the ball or not. Fire Mountain. So, yes, the flippers are pretty far apart on this one, but the pegs and pop bumper in the center will actually keep the ball in play a lot longer than you'd think at first glance. When the ball does hit that pop bumper, it'll usually give you an opportunity to hit it with the flipper, so this winds up being a pretty active table. Other than that, the most interesting thing on this table is the hole in the middle that's worth 10 points the first time you land it, 100 points the second time, and 1,000 points the third time, and then it repeats after that. Nautilus. This could very well be the easiest of the retro tables. The only way to drain is between the flippers, which are relatively close together, by the way, and the ball seems to be moving a little bit slower than normal on this table. The main feature on this table are the five holes labeled from A through E. Land in one of these holes when they're unlit and you get 100 points. Light the hole with the corresponding target and then the hole is worth 1,000 points. And it stays that way the rest of the game. All of this combined makes this table one of the easiest and highest scoring retro tables. Mexico 86. The layout of this table seems fairly standard, well, aside from the huge gap between the flippers. This table's all about fours. Hit the four rollovers at the top of the playfield to spell goal. Hit the rollover on the right side four times to spell pass. Hit the rollover on the left side four times to spell kick. Every time one of these words is spelled, you earn a thousand points. There's also the standing target that'll increase in points every time it's hit, and it'll hit its max value of a hundred points in, well, four hits. That's all there really is to this table. The real challenge is just keeping the ball in play, though. Zancor. This version of Zancor is actually quite a bit brighter than its solid state and remake variations. This table has six flippers, so it's not that difficult to bat the ball around here. The main feature here is that there are three standing targets about three quarters of the way up the field. They start at 10 points, increase to 20 points the first time they're hit, and then max out at 50 points the third time they're hit. So hitting those targets repeatedly, as well as the 100 and 200 point rollovers, are the best bet for points on this table. Mystic Star. This table is all about the 1-2-3s and ABCs. The 1-2-3s are the rollover lanes at the top and bottom drains and start out lit. When all three are unlit, you get a thousand points. The ABCs are the standing targets to the left and right of the pop bumper cluster. They start out unlit, and when they're all lit, you get a thousand points. It's all pretty straightforward but throw in the additional feature that there are three holes in the center of the table. The left one will light an unlit letter, the right one will unlight a lit number, and the center one will flash the pop bumpers, increasing their point value for a limited amount of time. This one isn't bad at all. Aerobatics. This is another fairly standard looking table with nothing that really stands out immediately. The gimmick with this table is that the point values for all the targets keep alternating between low and high, that is lit or unlit, every time a pop bumper or slingshot is activated. 
this makes scoring in this table rather luck-based as you have no idea if the ball is going to strike targets when they're lit or not since they change so frequently. It's an interesting concept, but it can be frustrating if the ball keeps only hitting unlit targets. Super Sonic. I like the main feature of this one a lot. There are seven pop-uppers on this play field and are initially worth 10 points a hit. However, by landing in the hole in the center of the play field, the pop bumpers increase by 10 points each time, up to a total of 100 points a hit. It may not sound like a lot, but even just doubling or tripling the initial point value could lead to a decent score, especially if done early on since the point value doesn't reset in between balls. Universe. Here's a table with a whopping nine pop bumpers. Most of them are situated in a circle surrounding three holes. The holes are worth 100 points, but whichever one is lit is worth 500 points. However, with every pop bumper hit, the lit hole changes, meaning it's really all up to luck if you're gonna get 500 points or 100 points if the ball lands in the hole. The flippers are pretty far apart, but the peg in the middle helps out immensely. Also, it may be rather difficult, but hitting all five rollover lanes will net you a massive 2,000 points. Spooky. The last table here has a pretty standard layout, but there's only one thing you really need to do here, and that's hit the center standing target. At the beginning of each ball, it's worth 10 points. Hitting it will advance the score times 10, as well as landing in the holes on either side. The target maxes out at 1,000 points, and 1,000 points every time you hit the target isn't bad at all. The only problem here is trying to prevent the ball from draining in the out lanes. And that's all 27 retro tables. Like I said earlier, you're probably going to be interested in having all these tables and purchase the extremely cheap bundle, or you'll automatically have all these tables included in some other bundle you've purchased. Or you'll only have a handful of these tables if they were included with some of the other individual table purchases you've made. Regardless, I just wanted to play them myself and briefly cover them in a video, which is now concluding. So, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and you did like it, I would suggest liking the video. And if you've made it this far and you're not yet subscribed, I would recommend subscribing because I have plenty of other pinball related videos on this channel. There will be plenty more to come. Also, if you're interested in watching me play these type of games live, I would check out my Twitch channel, which is Pro Pinball, the same as this channel on YouTube. So, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching.